Let's say that this box is a mortgage-backed security. You can divide this box into tranches. So you've got tranche one, tranche two, and so on. Each tranche has a different level of risk. So investors who want the least risk, they could invest in the top tranche, okay, this one right here. And let's say that this tranche right here has the highest repayment priority. In other words, when investor invests in this, they are gonna get their cash flows from that investing in that security before the investors in this bottom tranche. Okay, bottom tranche, they have the lowest uh, priority when it comes to getting their cash flow. So let's say there's defaults, for example, because this, this is based on a pool of mortgages and some people default and don't pay their mortgage. Okay, so these people are going to get their money first. These investors who've invested in the top tranche, whereas the ones who've invested in the bottom tranche, they're going to get paid last. So there's more risk in the bottom tranche. Now, why would anyone invest in that? Well, there's a higher potential return. So higher potential return, but the highest risk of being in the bottom tranche. So here's the nice thing about this. Investors can choose which of the tranches that they want to be invested in based on their specific risk appetite. So when we take a mortgage-backed security like this and we slice it up into tranches and then investors choose which tranche they want to be invested in, that is called a collateralized mortgage ob obligation, CMO. Okay, Collateralized mortgage obligation is just a mortgage-backed security that was divided into tranches based on different risk profiles. Okay, Now, if you take an asset-backed security, which remember that's credit card receivables, car loans, any pool uh, of, of loans can be put into an asset-backed security. You could have corporate debt in there, for example. So you got an asset-backed security. When you take that and you slice it up like this, and so then you've got a collateralized debt obligation, a CDO. Okay, so let's get into a little bit more of the specifics. So each tranche is going to have different schedules for the return of the principal. Okay, that's basically getting the money back, right? As I talked about where the, the borrowers, right? Because there's mortgages here. That's the underlying asset that the cash flows are coming from. Or if we're talking about a CDO, the underlying asset could be credit card receivables. So as the cash is coming in from those, those borrowers, who is going to have the top priority in terms of the return of principal? Okay, if you're in the bottom tranche, okay, they call that the Z tranche. If you're in the Z tranche, you're going to get uh, the, the, you're going to have the lowest priority in terms of uh, return of the principal. Now, could be different coupon rates for the different tranches. Uh, and then also, what do we do with prepayment? Okay, how are we going to allocate prepayment? Prepayment is an issue when we talk about prepayment risk. If uh, the refinance rate goes down, if interest rates go down, what's going to happen? People are going to refinance their mortgages, okay, and so they're going to pay off their mortgage. So how do we deal with that? How do we allocate uh, prepayment of, of the mortgages? So there's going to be different schedules for all this based on that, that particular CMO or CDO. Okay. Now, as I already mentioned, the Z tranche was also called the Z bond. That's the one where you got the biggest risk, also the potential biggest reward. But if you're getting the cash flows last and there's a bunch of defaults, okay, people aren't paying their credit cards or they're not paying their mortgage, then those are the people that those are the investors that are going to get hit the hardest. Okay. Now, this CMO CDO structure of, of slicing and dicing up mortgage backed securities, asset backed securities. In theory, this is supposed to result in more predictable cash flows for investors because you can basically look and say, okay, look, I, I have very low appetite for risk. I, I, I'm going to say, okay, I want to be in the top tranche. But if I say, no, I, I'm willing to take on some risk provided I get um, a potential higher return for it, then you can invest in one of the lower tranche, lower priority tranches. Okay. Now, here's an overview how the process works. First, so we've got a loan originator. Uh, they make some loans. So let's, let's say we're talking about a bank and a bank is originating mortg mortgages. OK, again, if we're talking about a CDO, we could have uh, car loans in there. It doesn't have to be mortgages, uh, but let's just stick with mortgages. OK, so we've got a bank and they originate some some mortgages. They, they lend to some people to buy homes or it could be that they're lending to uh, for, for commercial real estate. But let's just stick with just residential mortgages. They then, the originators of so the bank, they sell those uh, mortgages to a special purpose entity, okay, that is typically set up as a trust, okay? Now, that special purpose entity, then they are going to issue debt securities, okay? These investor certificates and the cash flow. So if you're an investor and you say, yeah, what, I want one of these certificates, what are you getting? You're getting the cash flows from the underlying assets, which in this case, the underlying asset we said was a mortgage. Okay. Now, the debt securities, 
Okay, these debt securities that are being issued by this SBE, they are then placed into the tranches that we talked about. So you got the different tranches based on repayment priority, credit risk, and the things that, that we discussed. So if you're in a senior tranche, okay, you're going to have a higher priority and, and less risk. Okay? So now, then what is going to happen is a ratings agency can assign a rating to the debt securities. Okay, these are these are it's like rating bonds or like rating a note. Okay, so they issue a rating based on you know the quality of the loans. Think about the mortgage. Were these mortgages uh, to people who are subprime subprime borrowers? Okay, people who have a high risk of default, or do these people have really great credit score? Okay, so what is the quality of, of these mortgages? The securitization structure, how it's set up. Uh, they might do some stress testing. Okay, so you've got this ratings agency. You wonder why would a ratings agency come in? Because the investors, if you think who's buying or investing in these CDOs and CMOs, you might have a pension fund. And maybe that pension fund can only invest, uh, make investments in things that have been rated investment grade. Okay, so that's where the ratings agency would come into play. Because you, you don't know, if you're the investor, you don't know the quality of these loans. Okay, or you didn't originate these loans. So the, in theory, the ratings agency is supposed to play an important role by helping you assess that risk and say, OK, it, do, is it really the risk that I'm being told uh, you know, when I'm investing here? So you're an informed investor. Now, and obviously, in the financial crisis, uh, you know, the ratings agencies were asleep at the wheel and a lot of people got hurt badly by bad behavior of banks and then also failure of oversight with raging agency giving high ratings to uh you know, CDOs and CMOs that basically had the underlying assets were garbage. Okay, now, finally, the loans are going to be serviced by, usually by a subsidiary of the loan originator. Now, remember, the loan originator is, is usually, so that we're talking about a bank, doesn't have to be, but let's just say it was a bank, okay, and this uh, bank's going to have this subsidiary, and we talk about servicing the loan, remember, somebody needs to collect payments from those, from those borrowers, okay, because the investor, when you invest in a CMO, you're not going around knocking on people's doors saying, hey, your mortgage payment is due. Okay, so the bank, even though this is set up and the loan is off their books and they're not part of this and you're the investor, now you're on the hook for it. Uh, somebody needs to service those mortgages. So the bank will set up this subsidiary. They collect the payments on behalf of the special purpose entity and they receive a fee in exchange for doing so.